Treasurer, thank you so much for your contribution to this discussion. My name's Wendy, I'm a GP, Treasurer Pharmacologist, and we're going to have a little chat now about the use of medication in pregnant women who are suffering from uh, disorders such as bipolar, schizophrenia, and the psychoses. Treasure, these conditions unsettle me, the medication use in pregnancy, it bothers me. Should I be worried? That's a difficult question to answer in the context of medicines alone. I think quite rightly, these are complex mental health disorders. You've got um, a group of women who are very vulnerable, very prone to relapse, um, and quite difficult to stabilise. Mm -hmm. So quite rightly, you should be worried because they're hard to manage. But the medication component is not the bit you need to worry about as much as perhaps some GPs suspect. Mm -hmm. So um, I've grouped these together, not because they are the, um, the same disorder, but many of the drugs again will overlap. Mm -hmm. So um, our toolbox consists of antipsychotics and we have both the typical and the atypical. The typical have been used for the last 30 to 40 years and if you think about the fact that ligactyl, chlorpromazine, is used for resistant hyperemesis of pregnancy in first trimester, you can be reassured that the haloperidols, the chlorpromazine, have a good safety record of use um, during pregnancy. In terms of the atypicals, many of these are a lot newer, so we don't have the, the depth of evidence, uh, but the mechanism by which they work collectively on dopaminergic receptors is very similar. Their effects on prolactin, for example, um, um, will have subtle nuances in degree, but essentially are similar. And in terms of first trimester use, um, um, seem to be remarkably safe. So as a class, we're pretty comfortable if you can stabilise the patient on their antipsychotic. Um, they will do much better during the pregnancy. Um, the trick is to keep them adherent. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a medical rather than a pharmacological, mm -hmm. I guess, concern. The other options as we move into particularly bipolar is the use of lithium or the anti-epileptic medicines. Now, lithium is still a problem in pregnancy. That's because it's a tiny molecule. It's hydrophilic, it's watery, um, replaces sodium and iodine in cells, um, has been associated with um, effects on fetal thyroid function, and um, in a dose-related way can cause congenital anomalies. So where it's feasible, we'll change the patient on to an alternative, um, perhaps an anti-epileptic agent like carbamazepine to get them through the period of organogenesis and then if they're not well stabilised, take them back to their lithium at that point. Um, the anti-epileptics uh, are not a uniform class. You've got your antifolate agents like valproate and again because of the risk of neural tube defect we try and avoid those mm -hmm. agents. Um, carbamazepine and lamotrigine of the bunch seem to be a little bit safer. So it's, it's a more complex area and that's why obviously having specialist involvement um, is very, very useful in this setting. So Tricia, um, anything else that you'd like to add in summary then? I guess the key message for me is that this is a complex area of mental health. We need um, specialist assistance. Um, the drugs um, have high risk in some ways but high gains for both mum and baby and some of the other principles we talked about in depression in terms of second trimester effects with fetal toxicity, um, drug accumulation, the importance of breastfeeding applies equally to conditions like schizophrenia and bipolar as it does to depression. Okay, yeah. thank you Treasure. Thank you.